Naimans are one of the greatest and most numerous Turkic clans, which formed part of the Kazakh and other peoples. The Naiman Union of the Segiz Oguz tribes, eight clans, has been known since the middle of the 8th century. Segiz Oguzes lived between the Irtish and Orhon rivers, occupying lands from the Kangai to Tarbagatai. In 744, the second Turkic Kaganat, Ashina dynasty, was disintegrated and was replaced by a new state, the Uyghur Kaganat, or the third Turkic Kaganat. The ruling clan was the Oguz clan, Yaglikar. In 755, the Kagan Moyanchur united the Turkic tribes, creating a large state from the Black Irtish to Western Manchuria, which included the Segiz Orguzes. In 755, a civil war broke out in China. The Chinese emperor of the Tang dynasty appealed to the Moyanchur for help. The civil war in China lasted 10 years. The intervention of the Uyghur Turks in China ended with the suppression of the uprising. Later, various epidemics claimed the lives of millions of Chinese people. China lay in ruins. The population decline was enormous, according to the census. The population fell from 53 million to 17 million by 36 million. China annually paid a huge tribute to the Uyghur Kaganat in the amount of 20,000 pieces of silk a year for its contribution to the suppression of the uprising. The Kaganat became richer. Trade developed rapidly. The Uyghur Kaganat had its own writing system, the Uyghur or Old Naiman alphabet. It was a powerful empire. In 840, an acute political crisis arose in the Kaganat. Under the influence of natural disasters, the loss of livestock, and internal strife, the Kaganat began to weaken. The Kyrgyz invaded the country. The country collapsed. Part of the Oguz went south to Tibet, creating the Principality of Gangzhou. Another part of the Oguz also left to the south creating the Turfan Principality. Some remained in their places of residence. In the future, they were named Naimans and Kires, and in the 10th century, they began to create new state associations. According to the testimony of the Persian historian Rashid al-Din, included in the collection of Annals of 1300, the Naimans and Uyghurs remembered their common family roots from the time of the Uyghur Kaganat. The Naiman Khans and the Uyghur merchants communicated warmly, although more than 300 years had passed since the collapse of the Kaganat. In the 10th century, Central Asia was invaded by the Kidani people of Tungus origin, who created a new state in North China, the State of Liao. In the 10th century, the Naimans, Segiz Oguzes, entered into confrontation with the Liao Empire. The Kidani Tonguzes called the Segiz Oguzes as Naimans, which in Tungus language meant eight clans. Some historians mistakenly believe that the name Naimans originated from the Mongols, although in the 10th century the Mongols did not exist as a people. According to the Kazakhstani researcher Maral Tampiev, the Chinese called all nomads, Turks and Tongus, who lived north of the Great Wall of China as Mengu, which means dark or ignorant. It was not a national, but a political term. The Uyghurs, who traded throughout the Great Steppe, transferred this name as Mogul, which spread to all the Turkic tribes of the period of the conquest of Genghis Khan, as noted in the collection of chronicles by Rashid al-Din. Russian translators mistakenly translated the term Mengu from Chinese as the national Mongol, misleading the entire historical world. In the empire of Genghis Khan, the Turks constituted the overwhelming majority. The Mongolian people as a nation was formed in the 16th century, after the migration of the Tungus peoples to the territory of Mongolia, 
which became depopulated after the wars. The Tunguzes assimilated the Turkic population. In the Russian chronicles, there was no term Mongol in the 13th century. There was the term Tatars. In the dynastic chronicle of the Kidani Liaoshi, the Naimans and Keres are called Western and Eastern Jubu. Throughout the 10th to 11th centuries, the Naimans constantly fought the Liao Empire with varying success. In 984, the Naimans were defeated by the Kidani. In 1069, the Naimans defeated the Kidani. However, in 1092, the Naimans were defeated by the Kidani and were forced to conclude peace. According to the collections of Chronicles by Rashid al-Din, presumably in the second half of the 11th century, there was a state of Naimans of the Tekin tribe, whose Khan was Qadir Boyuruk Khan. The Naiman state was large and powerful. In 1125, the Kidani's Liao Empire was disintegrated. In 1143, Inanch Bilge Buku Khan became the Naiman Khan, who ruled together with his brother Narkish Tayan. The Khanat occupied the territory from western Mongolia to eastern Kazakhstan. By the end of the 12th century, in Altai, western Mongolia and eastern Kazakhstan, the Naimans created a strong, nomadic state. The Naimans had their own writing, the Uyghur or Old Naiman alphabet. The administrative apparatus and the tax system were created. All Khan's decrees were sealed with a gold seal. The Naiman army was created according to the decimal principle, division into tens, hundreds, thousands, and so on. The worldview of the Naimans was Tengrianism, the veneration of the great god Tengri. This is a system of views on the world that determines the actions and deeds of a person. This is the harmony of man and nature, man and society. Quarrels were rare among nomads. The laws in the Naiman state were the same as those of their ancestors, the ancient Turks. Crimes such as theft of livestock, treason, and adultery were punishable by death. In 1007, the Naimans in Keres, probably for political reasons under the influence of Christian missionaries, adopted Nestorian Christianity. It lasted no more than a few generations and left no trace in the psychology of the Naimans and Kedes. The Naimans were engaged in nomadic cattle breeding as well as hunting, lived in felt yurts which were easily disassembled and used wheeled carts. In 1190, Tayan Khan was elected as Khan of the Naimans and ruled together with his brother, Buyuruk Khan. The brothers didn't get along with each other, and there were permanent disagreements between them. So part of the clans roamed with Tayan Khan, the other with Buyuruk Khan. At the end of the 12th century, Temujin, the future great Mongol conqueror, strengthened his power. He began to unite the Turks and mixed Turkic Tungus nomadic tribes. To establish power in the Great Steppe, he had to subdue the Kirates and Naimans. In 1203, Temujin defeated the Khan of the Kirates, Wang Khan. There was still a strong enemy, the Naiman Khanat. In 1204, a battle took place between Temujin and Tayan Khan at the foot of the Kangai Mountains in Altai. Tayan Khan's brother, Buyuruk Khan, did not take part in the battle and did not help. The Naimans were defeated. Tayan Khan died in battle. When the surrounded Naimans were offered to surrender, they refused and replied, The Naimans do not surrender to captivity. Almost all of them perished. Military honor was highly valued among the Naimans. 
it is better to die in battle than to surrender. In 1206, Buyuruk Khan was defeated by Temujin. In 1206, at the Kuru Altai, Temujin was raised on a white felt mat and was declared the supreme Khan of the entire steppe. He received a new name, Genghis Khan. The victory over the Naimans opened the way for Genghis Khan to world domination. In 1210, the conquest of North China and then other countries began. In 1206, Kushuluk Khan the son of Tayan Khan, on the banks of the Bukhtarma River, a tributary of the Irtish River and the territory of present-day eastern Kazakhstan, was defeated by the troops of Genghis Khan and went to the southeast of modern Kazakhstan. Part of the Naimans stayed in Altai and submitted to Genghis Khan, becoming part of his empire. In South Kazakhstan, the Karakitai dynasty ruled in the Karakitai state, which fought with the Khorezm Shah. The Karakitai were in a difficult political situation. Gurkhan, the ruler of the Karakitais, turned to Kushluk Khan for help. Kushluk Khan arrived with his army to the Karakitais and made a coup in the Karakitai state, seizing power in 1211. In 1213, after the death of Gur Khan, Kushluk Khan became a full-fledged ruler of Semerichi and South Kazakhstan, creating a new state. Genghis Khan saw the strengthening of the former enemy in 1218 and sent an army led by Jebe Noyon. Kushluk Khan was defeated again and died in the Badakhashan region, the territory of modern Tajikistan. So the dynasty of Naiman Khans, which ruled for almost 200 years, was ended. The Naimans entered the empire of Genghis Khan and took part in the conquests of Genghis Khan. In 1220-1223, the Naimans took part in the famous campaign of the generals of Genghis Khan, Jibin Nayon, and Subade Bagadur to the southern Russian steppes through northern Iran and the Caucasus. In the spring of 1223, a combined 80,000 strong army of the Kipchaks and Russian princes arrived at the battle against Jebe and Subade. The Russian troops were headed by 15 princes. The army of Jebe and Subade consisted of three Tumens, numbering about 25,000 people. Half of the troops were Naimans. On May 31, 1223, a battle took place on the Kalka River. Jebe and Subade managed to stretch the combined Russian and Kipchak army across the steppe by feigning retreat and then unexpectedly attacked. The Russian army suffered a severe defeat. Almost all Russian soldiers and princes were killed. The Novgorod chronicler wrote, And there was a cry and lamentation and sorrow in all the cities and villages of Russia. In 1256, the Naimans participated in the campaign of Genghis Khan's grandson, Hulagu, to the Middle East. In 1258, Baghdad was taken and the state of Ilkhan Hulagu was created. Hulagu Khan had a commander, Ketbuga, a Naiman by birth. By the order of Hulagu Khan, Ketbuga must conquer the city of Damascus in Syria, and then conquer Egypt. In 1259, Ketbuga, at the head of a 20,000 army, began the conquest of Syria. At that time, a dynasty of Mamluk Turks ruled in Egypt. The Mamluk army went out to meet the army of Ketbuga. On September 3, 1260, a battle between the Mumluks and Ketbuga took place in Ain Jalut, near the city of Nazareth. The Ketbuga's army included Turks, as well as detachments of Georgians and Armenians. Turks fought against Turks. Luck betrayed Ketbuga. 
and he was defeated. His army fled. Ketbuga fought bravely to the last, and then he was captured and presented to the Mamluk Sultan Kutuz. Ketbuga spoke insolently with Kutuz and was executed. In memory of the Naimans, Ketbuga remained a great warrior who did not change his military oath. A monument to Ketbuga was built in the city of Jezkazgan in Kazakhstan. In 1236, Genghis Khan's grandson Batu began a campaign to the west to conquer the Volga Bulgaria, the Kipchak steppes, and Russian principalities. In 1236, the Volga Bulgaria was conquered. In 1238, Batu defeated the army of the Ryazan prince, taking a number of Russian cities. In the same year, Chernigov was captured. In 1240, Kiev was taken. The Russian principalities were subjugated and fell into vassal dependence for 250 years from the Tatars. The army of Batu Khan included several dozen Turkic nomadic clans. The largest of them were the Kireis, Naimans, Kipchaks, Jalayir, Konrats, and others. Naimans made up a third of Batu Khan's troops. In 1242, Batu Khan created a new state, the Golden Horde, with its capital on the Yadil River, the Volga. In the first half of the 14th century, under Khan Uzbek, the Golden Horde reached its highest power. Cities and roads were built. Trade flourished. Under Khan Uzbek, the Islamization of the nomadic populations began. The oppression of nomads, Tengrians, began. The nomads of the Turks began to migrate to Moscow and the Lithuanian Principality, where they were received with open arms. Lithuanians and Russians received new soldiers. The disintegration of the Golden Horde began in the 14th and 15th centuries. The process of migration of nomads to Lithuania and Russia intensified. In the Moscow Principality, the Tatars converted to Orthodoxy and carried out military service in their new homeland. The Moscow princes distributed land plots to the Tatars. The Tatars were part of the Russian nobility and faithfully served their new homeland. The Tatars took an active part in the political life of the Moscow Principality, in the formation of the Russian state and then the Russian Empire. According to historians, in the Russian nobility, Turks and Tatars make up from 35 to 40 percent. According to the academician Nikolai Baskakov, over 300 prominent figures of the Russian nobility were of Turkic origin. These are the Kutuzovs, Ushakovs, Yusupovs, Urusovs, Karamzins, Minins, Pajarsky, Turgenevs, and others. After the collapse of the Golden Horde, the Naimans were part of the Great Horde, the Kazan Khanate, the Crimean Khanate, the Astrakhan Khanate, and the Siberian Khanate. Subsequently, the Naimans became part of the Kazan Tatars, Crimean Tatars, Savrapol and North Caucasian Nagais, Bashkirs, Siberian Tatars. The Naimans living in Kazakhstan were part of the Uluz of Jochi, the eldest son of Genghis Khan, and then became part of the Golden and White Hordes, led by the son of Jochi Khan, Batu Khan and Orda Ejen. In the 15th century, the Naimans became part of the Kazakh Khanat and, due to their large numbers, took an active part in the political life of the Kazakh Khanat. In 1723, the invasion of the Jungars into the Kazakh steppes began, which brought enormous disasters to the Kazakh people. The Naimans took part in all the wars against the Jungars and the Volga Kalmuks. In 1757, the Naimans, 
together with other Kazakh clans, participated in the liberation of the territory of East Kazakhstan from the Jungars. They fought under the leadership of such Batirs as the legendary hero of the Kazakh people, Kabenbay Batir, Akhtamberdi Jirao, Espinbit Batir, Shingoja Batir, Barak Batir, Marka Batir, Kotantaup, Bugumbay Batir. Currently, the Naiman clans live in the East Kazakhstan and Almaty regions. They represent the clans of Karakire, Matai, Sadir, Tortyul, Bara, Sarajomart. In the Karaganda region, there are Baganali. In the Kizilorda region, there are Batali. About 3 million Naimans now live in Kazakhstan. The total number of Naimans in the world is about 5 million. Naimans also live in China, Uzbekistan, Russia, Mongolia, and other countries. The Naimans were part of the Ulus of Genghis Khan's son, Ugade, in the 13th to 14th centuries, and the Ulus of Jochi Khan in the 13th century. Naimans were part of Timur's empire in the 14th to 15th centuries. In the 15th century, they were part of the state of nomadic Uzbeks of the Abu Khair Khan, then became part of the Shibanids Khanat descendants of Abu Khair Khan. The Naimans played an important role in the political life of the Central Asian states. The Naimans took part in the campaigns of the great conqueror Timur to Iran, India, Syria, and the Golden Horde. Among Timur's commanders were the Naimans Temir Koja, Akbuga, Yerkebulan, and others. Naimans became part of the Uzbek people, as well as the Turkmens, Uyghurs, and Karakalpaks. At the beginning of the 20th century, Uzbek Naimans were subdivided into 17 clans. Okresh Naiman, Baganali, Baltali, Kara Naiman, close to Kazakh Naimans, and others. In Afghanistan, the Naimans became part of the Turkic people of the Hazaris who have been living there since the conquest of these lands by Genghis Khan. In the first half of the 14th century, Khan Uzbek, the leader of the Golden Horde, began to pursue a policy of Islamization. The main population of the Golden Horde were Tengrian Turks, they worshipped the god Tengri. The Tatars, dissatisfied with the policy of Khan Uzbek, left with their families and Auls, with all their property to the Moscow and Lithuanian principalities. This was a ready-made military force. The resettlement of the Turks Tatars began with the reign of the great Lithuanian Prince Vitold, 1392-1430. The Turks received land plots from the Lithuanian prince and were hired for military service. With the intensification of the disintegration of the Golden Horde, the migration of the Turks to the Lithuanian and Moscow principalities intensified. The Tatars took part in all the wars on the side of the Rech Pospolita. The Polish and Lithuanian principalities united in the 16th century. The Tatars took part in the famous Battle of Grunwald against the Teutonic Order Crusaders on the side of the united Polish-Lithuanian army in 1410. The Crusaders were defeated. The Tatars who lived in the Rzecz Pospolita, the Polish and Lithuanian principalities, were divided into six tribal groups or squadrons. Those were Naimans, Barins, Żalair, Konarats, Korshuns, and Uhlans. The descendants of the Golden Horde Sultans and Murza enjoyed the rights of the Polish nobility, the gentry, or Szlachta. The second group consisted of the Cossack Tatars. They were simple soldiers. They performed military, transport, courier, and guard duty. 
The third group consisted of the city Tatars, the descendants of prisoners of war. The Tatars professed the Muslim religion. Part of the Tatars adopted Christianity and received the full rights of the Polish gentry. The famous family of Polish Tatars, Kryczynski, comes from the Naimans, who arrived in Lithuania in 1410. The Naimans had roots in Polish nobles, Koretsky, Panarski, Potarzatski, and whose other ancestors served in the Naiman banners. The Tatars faithfully served the new motherland of the Rich Paspolita, the Lithuanian principality, and left their mark on the history of these countries. The Polish king included the Tatars in the royal guard. The princely families of Tatar origin in the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth, these are the Wisniewicz, Asanchukowicz, Barcinski, Yushinski, and others, remained in the history of Poland. During the disintegration of Poland in the 18th and 19th centuries, the Tatars took an active part in the uprisings of the Poles for the freedom and independence of Poland in 1830, 1863 to 1864, against the Russian Empire. It should be noted that in the 19th century, several dozen generals and senior officers from the Tatars served in the Russian army, which did not prevent them from remembering the 500-year history of the Tatars and being proud of it. In 1929, the Polish researcher Stanislav Jadulievich published The Coat of Arms of the Tatar Clans of Poland, which lists over 600 Tatar clans who profess the Muslim and Christian religions. On September 1, 1939, after the invasion of Poland by German troops, a squadron of Tatar lancers was one of the first to engage the enemy. Babur, the great-grandson of the great conqueror Timur, began the conquest of India in 1519. In 1526, Babur captured the cities of Delhi and Agra, creating the Mughal Empire. The Turks were called Mughals at that time. The warriors of the great Mughals consisted of different Turkic clans. The largest of them were the Naimans, Keres, Jalayirs, Dulats, Kanis, Kipchaks, Argins, and many other clans. The descent of Babur Akbar in the 16th century united India into a single state. Thus, the Turks united India into a single state. Under the Mughals, India began to flourish. Cities, roads were constructed. The Taj Mahal mausoleum, one of the seven wonders of the world, was built. The Babur dynasty ruled India for 300 years. In the 18th century, the empire began to weaken. At the beginning of the 19th century, the colonization of India by the British began. In 1858, the British announced the liquidation of the institution of the empire. In 1877, Queen Victoria received the title of Empress of India. The Turks left a deep mark in the history of India and Pakistan. Currently, the descendants of the Mughal Turks live in the west of India, in the number of 3 million people, and Pakistan, about 2 million people, and take an active part in the political life of these countries. In 2005, Pakistan developed a 3,000-kilometer nuclear warhead cruise missile named Babur, after the founder of the Mughal Empire. Naimans live in the very south of the Republic, in a wide strip along the borders with Tajikistan, Batkin Oblast. There are about 15 clans, Baibol, Boz, Boz Targai, Kara Naiman, and others. (music) 
After the fall of the Naiman Khanat, the Naimans entered the empire of Genghis Khan in the state of his sons Ogade and Tului. In the 13th century, they remained on the territory of Mongolia. Naiman clans live in Mongolia and Inner Mongolia in China. They speak the Naiman dialect of the Mongolian language. Among the Naimans of Inner Mongolia, the Naiman and Daru Naiman clans were noted. From the end of the 15th century, the Naimans became part of the Charahars. In 1636, the Naimans were part of one of the Hoshuns, districts in the southern part of the confluence of the Yangtze and Liaohao rivers. Some of the Naimans became part of the Khalks, who settled in the central and eastern parts of Mongolia. A clan of Naimans was formed, large, ich, and small, baga. The Naimans in Inner Mongolia, which are located in China, live in the Hoshun district of Naiming Tsi, which are part of the Tongliao district. Since the 14th century, the Naimans that were part of the Ogade Ulus and Tului are part of the Buryat Naimans. Buryat Naimans have become members of the Tsongols, Western Buryats, and the Alar Bulats, Balagan Buryats, Hongadors, Onon Buryats, Selenga Buryats, and the Hamnigan clan Uryanhai. The Naimans in Buryatia are the descendants of the medieval Naimans who were part of the state of the sons of Genghis Khan, Ugade, and Tului. Naimans, or Maimans, are one of the most numerous Altai clans. Naimans live in the central regions of the Altai Republic, in the Gorno Altai region. The Ongudaisky, Shebolinsky, Ustkoksnyski regions, the Ustkansky region, the urban type village of Maiman, and the capital in the city of Gorno Altaisk. Altai folk legends mention Bura Maimans. They consist of two divisions, Kara Maiman, Black Naimans, and Kuk Kogol Maiman, Blue Naimans. (laughs) 